Hello everyone, good morning. It's a beautiful morning from Nigeria here. Um, welcome to my channel. My name is Bill Kiss. I this is a new channel, like I used to say in the two previous lessons. This is a third um lesson we are going to be having. So this channel is a new channel, so I will oblige, I will I will beseech you, I will love it if you can share these videos with your families and friends, especially with children, and give thumbs up, give it a like, you know, subscribe. And tell your friends to subscribe because this is one of the very few channels on youtube that teaches your kids most especially the ones in grade seven to grade nine the basics and concepts of mathematics in depth so you well you don't want to uh, lose it at all so we are going to be uploading videos every day now today lesson is going we are still on numbers anyway but today we are going to the symbols for numbers so one of the ones we want to look at is the tally the tally is basically using strokes to represent what number so if for instance i write five now if I want to represent it using tally, I'll just say one. I'll just count five strokes. Now, on the fifth stroke, I'll go to, I'm going to use it, the fifth stroke to cross the fourth, um, the four strokes that I have already. So now, let me show you how to use tally to represent numbers. So for instance, I have a figure of five, and I want to represent it using what? Tally. Let's see how to do that. So I'll say one, two, three, four. Now, the fifth stroke, you just use it to cross this. Does that make sense? All right. Now, if I want to use a, a tally as well to represent, let's say, um, 10, for instance, or 12. Let's see how we can do that. If I have 12, this is what I'm going to do. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Do you understand? So it is just easy peasy. It is very, very easy. So if you want to represent like 3 or 4, it's also very cheap. Just say 3. I'll do I represent this entirely. Just count on three strokes. One, two, three. Now, the only time you get to use um, a stroke to cross the other one is when you have five. Do you understand? On every fifth stroke, you use a fifth stroke to cross the four strokes. Do you understand? All right. Now, the other symbols to represent numbers, apart from tally, is also what? The Roman numerals. Now, this Roman numerals, basically, we have... I've written here a series of numbers that we can use to represent. So let's start from one. Let's take this one. You need to learn or memorize this. You need to know this basic one offhand. Now, with these basic ones, you'll be able to the uh, you'll be able to know every other subsequent numbers that you're given. In as much as you know this one as a basic, if you can memorize it, if you can know it by heart, any other number whatsoever that you're given to, you'll be able to uh, to to write it out in numbers. Now let's look at figure one. Figure one is basically just Represented by what? By just one stroke. Figure two represented by two strokes, like this. Figure three represented by what? Three stroke strokes. And figure four represented by one stroke and a V, a V as a letter V. Figure five is represented by V, letter V also. That's five. Now you might also ask that figure four and figure five they look alike, so one way or the other. Now please take note. Look at this figure 4, I, V, figure 5, V, figure 6, V, I. Now look at this. You have 4, you have 5, and you have 6. This is 4, 5, and 6. Now, if you look at them so closely, you will realize the fact that as much as they look so similar, they still have, uh, they still have their, their differences. Now look at this logic. This is 4 because, you see this V is what? 5. Now, anytime in Roman, uh, in Roman numerals, if you have, this is 4, this is 5, this is what? 1. Anytime in Roman numerals, if you have a larger number at the front, like this, which is 5, and a smaller number at the back, like this, which is 1, it means what? Subtraction. So, what did you do here? You just say 5 minus 1, and that gives us what? 4. Now, look at the same example here. This V is what? is 5 and this v here is what is and uh, this i here is what is just one so anytime in roman numerals if you have a larger number at the back like this and you have a smaller number at the front it means addition and that's why you have to say five plus one and that gives you six do you understand so you might want to look at it one more time now in doing this it is a very it is a simple logic that you can use for subsequent computation of roman numerals do you understand meaning that Anytime you have a larger number at the front and you have a smaller number right behind it, it means just do the subtraction of the larger number of the smaller number from the bigger number. 
But anytime you have a smaller number at the front of the larger number, it means what? Addition. So please take note because you are going to be making use of this in subsequent computation of these Roman numerals. Is that taking? All right. Now, since you have established that fact, let's proceed to other numbers. I have 20 here. Don't forget that here. Okay, no, sorry, we stopped here. We stopped at 6, which is VI. Now, 7 is what? VII. That is 5 plus 6 plus 7. 8 is what? VIII. That is 5 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. And that gives us what? 8. Then we have 9, which is what? IX. Now, take note again. I and X. 9 is what? I and X. Mean that I is 1. Hmm? And our X is what? 10. So the fact that I is at the back of 10 is, is before, is, I is written, 1 is written before 10. That means you have to what? Minus. And that will be 10 minus 1 minus 1. And that gives us what? 9. That's why we say I X is what? 9. Meaning that our 11 will be what? 11 will be what? 11 will be X I. Why is it X I? Because I have 10 big number written first and then a small number. So in this case, you have to what? Add. But if you have a smaller number first and a bigger number later, that means you subtract. Please take note. So our 10 is what? Just X. My 9 is what? I X. Good. Now let's proceed to other numbers. I have 20 here. 20 means X X, which is 10, 10. 10 into two places. And that is what? 20. 40 is X L. 50 is L. Why is my 40 X L? My 40 is X L because I told you the L uh, in this, uh, in this uh, I told you here. That anytime you have a smaller number written first and a bigger number written later, that means you have to subtract. So this is my 40 that is XL. It means my X is what? 10. My L is what? 50. So because X, which is a smaller number than 50, is written before 50. So what do you do? You just say 50 minus X, and that is what why we have our 40 to be what? XL. Now my 50 is now what? L. My 60 is what? L X. Anytime we have a bigger number, which is what, 58, written first, I now have a smaller number written after it. So that means you have to what, add. If you have a bigger number first and then a smaller number later, you add. But here, if you have a smaller number first and a bigger number, you subtract. Is that clear? So that's why my 60 is what, L, X. Now my 90 follows the same pattern, which is what, X, C. That is 100 take away 10, and that is what, 90. Is what, 100. Take away 10. And that is what? 90. Why am I subtracting? I'm subtracting because X is a smaller number. And is at the is written first. And C is 100, a larger number. That means I have to subtract. Good. So my 100 is what? C. My 400 is C, D. My 500 is D. So basically, my 500 is what? D. But how did I get this by 400 to be C, D? My 400 is C, D because I know that my C is what? 100. My D is what? 500. And I told you, anytime you have a smaller number first and a bigger number later, that means you have to subtract. So since I have 100 here first, then 500. That means I will say 500 minus 100. It will give me what? 400. Is that taken? All right. Now my 500 is what? D. Is that clear? All right. So lastly, my 900 is what? C, M. And my 1000 is what? M. Why is my, 1, why is my 900 C, M? My 900 is seen here because of the fact that I know that this C is a smaller number, which is what? 100. And this M is a larger number, which is what? 1,000. And I told you, anytime you have a smaller number, anytime you have a smaller number first, before a bigger number, you have to what? Subtract. So if I say 1,000 minus 100, it should give me what? 900. So basically, I am not the one that manufacture all these fundamental symbols m d no so please try as much as possible to learn one to ten this 20 40 50 all of these 900 1000 try as much as possible to memorize them and to know them often so that it's going to be easy for you as time goes on thank you so very much for watching and please don't forget to subscribe to this new channel share it with your friends and family especially your children give it a, thumb, a, a, a thumbs up and i'll see you in the next class bye bye